Good morning students and welcome back to another class of life processes. This time we will study about photosynthesis under the topic of autotropic nutrition. In earlier class I have told you who are known as autotrophs. The living organism, those who can prepare their own food or can nourish themselves are known as autotrophs. For example, green plants. As they can prepare their own food, they are also known as dash. If you know the answer, leave it in the comment section. I will tell you the answer of this question in the end of the video. Okay? So till then, those who know the answer, hurry up and write it down in the comment section. Now, what is photosynthesis? The word photosynthesis can be separated to form two smaller words. Photo means light. Synthesis means to produce. When green plants produce their food in the presence of sunlight, the process is known as photosynthesis. Now let us study about photosynthesis in word equation. Six molecules of carbon dioxide plus 12 molecules of water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll produces C6H12O6. This is a simple form of carbohydrate or glucose. Glucose is used by the plant as a source of energy. Some of the glucose is used by plants for the growth and development, while few of the glucose or extra of the glucose is stored in the form of starch. The byproducts produced during photosynthesis are 6 molecule of water and 6 molecule of oxygen. These products are released in the air. Whereas the loss of water from the plant through the leaves is known as transpiration. So remember the word transpiration. We will be studying about it in detail in later videos. Three important parts of plant which are directly or indirectly involved in the process of photosynthesis are roots, stem and leaves. For photosynthesis, plant absorb water from soil through roots and this water is carried to leaves by stem. And the place where the photosynthesis is occurring is green leaves. As photosynthesis is occurring in green leaves, green leaves are also known as food factories of a plant or kitchen of a plant. Now let us see the structure of a leaf. Lamina. Lamina is a broad green surface of a leaf. Its function is to increase the surface area for maximum absorption of sunlight. We all know that chlorophyll is present in leaf which helps to trap the sunlight important for photosynthesis. Second part, midrib or main veins. Midrib or main vein is made up of numerous tiny tubules which carries water and mineral to a leaf. Third part, side veins. The veins that arises from main vein are known as side vein. The function is same. Veins are made up of special type of tissues known as vascular bundle. Vascular bundle is made up of two different types of tissue, xylem and phloem. Xylem helps to transport water, whereas phloem helps to transport the prepared food from leaf to different part of a plant. Now let us study about the internal structure of a leaf. A leaf is made up of three different layers. The first layer is known as upper epidermis as it is present on upper surface. Because of this, it is known as upper epidermis. The second layer is known as mesophyll. Meso means middle, phyll means leaf. And the last layer is known as lower epidermis. The upper layer of epidermis is covered by waxy cuticle. It reduces water loss from the plant. 
Mesophyll contains chloroplast. Chloroplast contains chlorophyll. And chlorophyll, we know it is very important for photosynthesis as it helps to trap the sunlight. When we see lower epidermis, there is a structure called guard cell. Guard cell controls the opening and closing of tiny little pores present on lower surface of leaf called stomata. Now let us move to our next topic, structure of stomata. Now what are stomata? Stomata are tiny holes present on lower surface of leaf. What is the function of stomata? Stomata helps in exchange of gases. We know that during photosynthesis, plant takes carbon dioxide and releases oxygen. This exchange of gases occurs through leaf and the structure through which the exchange of gases takes place is stomata. The opening and closing of stomata is controlled by bean shaped cells called guard cells. When there is water in guard cells, the guard cells swell up and the stomatal pores open. When there is no water in a guard cell, the guard cells shrink and the stomatal pores closes. This is how a guard cell controls the opening and closing of stomatal pores. Students, remember one thing. Stomata is a plural word. The singular word of stomata is stoma. Stomata not only helps in exchange of gases, but it also helps to remove extra water from the plant body. And the process is known as transpiration. Stomata remains open during the daytime and closes during the night time. However, stomata closes during the daytime also. When? When the condition is dry or when there is scarcity of water. When the atmospheric condition is dry or there is scarcity of water, just to prevent the water loss from the leaf, the stomatal pores closes during the daytime. Students, leaves are of two types. Monocot leaf and dicot leaf. Long narrow leaves are known as monocot leaves. The number of stomata in monocot leaf is equal on upper surface and on lower surface. Broad leaves are known as dicot leaves. The center vein is known as midvein or main vein. The veins which arises from main vein these veins are known as side veins. The function of veins is to carry water and minerals. They are made up of vascular bundle. And I told you, vascular bundles are made up of xylem and phloem. This flat green part of a leaf is known as lamina. And tip of a leaf is known as apex. In dicot leaves, the number of stomata varies. Maximum number of stomatas are present on lower surface of the leaf or in lower epidermis. Children, now let us see a small video on stomata. one point to remember. As I told you, plants absorb water through roots. Plants not only absorb water from the roots, they also absorb minerals. Minerals like calcium, potassium, sodium and nitrogen. Remember, nitrogen is not absorbed directly by the plant. Nitrogen is absorbed in the form of nitrate which is further used to make protein. Now why do plants need minerals? Plant needs mineral for proper and healthy growth. Now I'm revealing the answer of the question that I have asked you in the beginning of the video. 
The question was green plants or autotrophs, those who can prepare their own food are known as dash and the answer is producers. If your answer was correct, you all deserve. Well done. Children, if you want me to make more videos like this, then don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and bye-bye. See you in my next class.